Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and today we have an update, which is the WD Red Plus line. Now, this is a big deal because WD has finally made a clear demarcation in the WD Red line where there is DMSMR and now CMR. The company acknowledged that it had heard feedback over 60 days before the announcement of the WD Red Plus drives, but it is finally clearly separating the DMSMR offering from its CMR offerings, which is awesome. Now, we didn't get to do this video on the day of the release because the release happened in the afternoon, and plus after I record this, it goes off to other people, and so there's an entire process to even get one of these videos going. So we just are a little bit slow on that, and frankly, I didn't even wanna do a video, but then somebody said, hey, you know, you've done videos for the other three pieces, you didn't do a video covering the plus announcement, so you really should just for people that really watch STH on YouTube. I think that's a fair way to look at it, so we have a video. Now in the blog post, WD said it heard the feedback from the community that, hey, maybe this whole surreptitiously swapping DMSMR into the RED series was not a good idea, and it's now created the WD RED Plus. Now in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about, number one, what that means, and what the implications are going forward in the industry of the WD Red Plus line. I also kind of just want to talk timeline here and what it means for those who have already purchased drives. And then finally, want to end with a quick plea so that way anybody that is just buying WD Reds reflexively, at least we get the information to them so they know that that is actually a DMSMR drive, what a DMSMR drive is, and what they need to think about for their use case before they buy another one because that's something that we're gonna talk about, but it's a pretty big deal in this. Okay, first off, the Plus series. So something that I have been adamant about and others in the community have been adamant about is that WD needs to disclose the fact that they're using DMSMR technology, especially in NAS drives. And that is exactly what WD is accomplishing with their blog post. Specifically, we're gonna focus on a table that's in this blog post that shows the WD Red, Red Plus, and Red Pro drives. As you can see in this table, we finally have clear disclosure in terms of the fact that WD Red is now a DMSMR line. In fact, WD did another really cool thing, and they actually are saying that in their SMB focused and ZFS friendly Red Plus line, those are CMR drives. So they're actually even calling out ZFS, which we found was a particular issue with the DMSMR technology. So again, this is completely awesome. WD has split out the line, and so now consumers that are informed can make a choice and say, do I want SMR technology or do I want CMR technology? And that's kind of really the base root thing that we've been asking for since this whole thing got started. But I did want to talk a little bit about what WD did because there is a very significant nuance to how WD actually affected the change. WD did not create a new segment. They didn't create a WD peppermint or WD orange or brown or whatever color you want to denote that they have a DMSMR drive. Instead, what they did was they said, no, we're gonna put DMSMR squarely as the red offering. We're gonna take the CMR technology, move that to a red plus offering, but keeping WD red as DMSMR actually has some big implications because now WD has a line of drives that only scales up to six terabytes, which is really small if you think about capacities for NAS storage. And the WD red line isn't the red plus. I mean, this is the baseline. Right? I mean, you're not going to get rid of the WD Red brand. You might get rid of the WD Red Plus brand in the future because it's the plus version of the WD Red. And so if you think about it, WD actually by putting the CMR drives into the plus sub brand, they now have something that they put the WD Red CMR drives into an expendable brand. And while Red Plus is now expendable, the WD Red line needs more drives. And so if you think about hard drive manufacturing and sourcing all the materials, getting through production, all that kind of stuff, there's a long train that takes a long time, it's very hard to move and adjust course on. Well, then that kind of tells us, a, or at least gives us a good sense that WD is planning more DMSMR drives for this market. So either A, they're going to have to stop that entire train of materials, manufacturing, et cetera, and stop the WD Red line at the current capacities and then just only have the Red Plus and Red Pro, which would be kind of weird, or they're gonna have to fill out that WD Red line with more drives. The good thing is that they're disclosing this now, so at least consumers have an opportunity to know, but 
that still looks like that's the way forward. And putting them into WD Red is also not just limited to the WD drives. The market is so non-competitive these days because there are so few players that this is a pretty clear signal to Toshiba and Seagate saying, hey, our line is going to be DMSMR going forward because we are putting DMSMR in our base WD Red line. And so now if you are sitting at another hard drive manufacturer, you have to make a choice, which is, well, will I use DMSMR technology in my own line and be able to compete on a margin basis with Western Digital? Or am I gonna maintain CMR because of all the community feedback, am I gonna maintain CMR? WD has effectively given them a template that says, well, here's how you can accomplish that. We can have three tiers in our NAS drives going forward, or maybe just two if we eventually get rid of the Plus brand, but that's how these drives can get manufactured and marketed. But this whole bifurcation actually had another impact if you think about it. So what we know in terms of timeline is that these drives had been introduced. There were definitely blog posts and anecdotal evidence that people were having issues with these drives previously, but it really kind of came to a head in April with Chris Meller's piece over Blocks and Files where he did the investigation that said, hey, these drives are actually DMSMR and they're not being disclosed as being DMSMR drives. So that was mid-April. We had a blog post by WD actually talking about which drives are SMR and which are CMR later that month. Our testing, because we wanted to make sure we had a good process, that took quite a while. And so we didn't have our results until the end of May, about May 28th. Jim Salter at Ars Technica, we covered in the last video, he verified our results and also did his own testing. And he basically found that, you know, what we got seems reasonable. So after that June 5th confirmation, it took until June 23rd and the end of the day, June 23rd, for Western Digital to formally respond to the market and say that they are bifurcating the line into the Soho WD Red line and the Soho SMB and ZFS in intensive WD Plus line. It should be noted that those drives that were marked now just for Soho use, well, those during this entire period until June 23rd were being marketed as NAS drives for the SMB market. There was no communication from WD that said, hey, we shouldn't use these in ZFS. You had to go read STH and lots of you did, but you had to go read ours or STH or one of the other sites that covered this, our testing to be able to figure out that it wasn't a good drive for ZFS NASs. And the implications of that are actually really big because at least by Jim Salter's Ars Technica confirmation on June 5th and between that and June 23rd when the new WD Red Plus drives came out, WD knew or should have known that their drives were unfit for the purpose that were, they were being marketed for. And that's a big deal. Now, one could argue that the day should have been a little bit earlier. Instead of June 5th, maybe the day was Mar May 28th when we came out with our piece. Maybe it was actually mid-April when the Blocks and Files pieces started came, coming out. Or maybe it was even before that because WD was out in the market saying that DMSMR is no good and they knew that it didn't work with ZFS. But at the end of the day, whatever timeline you wanna spin, there was definitely a period where Western Digital knew or should have known that the drives that they were selling were unfit for the purpose that they were being marketed and advertised for. And now that WD has effectively made this admission, well, I mean, there are processes around the world that will go and figure out what the recourses are and that's cool. So if you bought drives recently and you're just finding out about this now, or maybe you found out and you have the drives and you want to figure out what you can do, well, your job is basically to go find a way to get yourself into those processes, whatever they are in the jurisdiction that you're watching from. But before we end this video, and hopefully this is the last one we do on the subject because I'm just tired of covering it. I just, again, I just want to make a plea to our readers and those watching this on YouTube that we look out for the folks that are vulnerable in this entire thing that can't really help themselves. Those are people that, number one, may not have access to different drives because of where they live, because of income disparities, whatever it is, they just may not have access to better technology like the WD Red Plus drives. And so they just go and buy WD Red because that's the best they can get. Now that WD is responsibly disclosing the fact that they are DMSMR technology drives, I think that's good. We just have to make sure that everybody in the market knows what DMSMR means. And that kind of brings us to the next use case, which is people that just don't really follow technology. So if you know someone that's tech savvy, that uses NASes, but doesn't necessarily keep up on, hey, this thing says it's DMSMR or SMR, what does that even mean? You should be a good tech citizen and explain what DMSMR means, because you may have that knowledge if you're watching this video, but others frankly don't because that's not their day job. That's not their passion to keep up on. They just want their files to be stored. 
So what we have to do as a tech community is make sure that people now know what DMSMR means. And the great thing is that now that WD and others are disclosing the fact that they're using DMSMR, those people, once we educate them, are able to go make the right decisions. What is not gonna help is the folks that are just reflexively buying WD Red because, hey, I have a bunch of WD Red drives, they've worked well for years, I'm just gonna go buy the new WD Red drive and well, with the new product naming scheme, those folks are still gonna get captured and still gonna buy DMSMR drives even without ever looking up what they are. But if they don't take the opportunity to make themselves informed consumers and we don't help them understand that they need to be informed consumers, well, maybe it's now the onus is on them. By not moving the DMSMR drives out of the WD Red line, those people are just gonna keep buying these drives and well, is the onus really on them or should it be on WD? I don't know, but I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. And hey, if you've made it this far, why don't you click on subscribe, turn on those notifications to see the next time that we come out with a new video. We have tons of new content coming out all the time on YouTube, but also a lot more coming out on the STH main site where we post new content every single day. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.